Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. Arkansas Bigfoot Encounter Deeply Haunts Eyewitness It was back in 2010, right before the sun was coming up one morning while hunting with college buddies in Arkansas. We stayed overnight and I got up earlier and went out with my dog to try and view the path we would be taking that morning, and get a general sense of the area. We walked for about a mile, and my dog out of nowhere stopped, his hair raised up on the back of his neck, Evers went forward at attention and growled. He then made a whimpering sound and looked at me and barked at me. He then booked, and I could hear him barking from a distance. I felt very uneasy, very motionless, like I couldn't move and just a sense of terror. I thought it was a cougar. I had my sidearm on me so I grabbed it. I checked to make sure I was ready to fire while looking around. It was then, ahead of me by this stream, a full-sized male Bigfoot stood up. His breath was visible because it was so cold. He was breathing heavy. I could smell him. The only way I can describe the smell is like a skunk, but not a skunk. It's as strong as a skunk smell. After making eye contact he screeched at me in an absolute threat. I looked down, keeping him in my line of sight but not eye contact, and slowly backed away facing him. I knew if he came towards me I'd put him down, I'm a good shot. I'll never forget the eyes, the smell, the fear. It haunts me in my dreams. I don't go deep into the woods, don't go camping or hiking anywhere there isn't a lot of people or tourists in traffic anymore. Don't stay overnight hunting. Refuse to hunt camp anywhere on the northwest of the country. I believe they are everywhere in North America. I basically duck hunt now and did it. I found out since then that there are more people that have seen them in Arkansas. Which is not where I'm from but where I went to college. It changed my life. And if it weren't for being a positive glass half full kind of guy, it could have sent me down a dark path. My experience was not one of wonder and amazement. My encounter was sheer terror. More detail of the incident. I was up on a ridge. He was at least 3 feet below me and met my line of sight. I'm 6 foot 3. He was anywhere between 8 to 10 feet tall. 400 plus pounds of lean muscle. Eyes were dark like a great white shark. Forehead low, back of head tall to a point. Flat nose. And flat teeth. Dark hair, it was still dark out. The sun was just coming up. I have PTSD, and I can't tell people why. Even though I function fine. The fact that I know other things exist means other things exist. And it is terrifying. As I left I felt I was being watched the rest of the time I was there. I told my buds I was leaving. I was shaken up and they could tell. I ended up pulling my truck over and just crying uncontrollably, not understanding why. I now think it was able to get into my head or put me under trance. I don't know. I just know they aren't to be taken lightly. And they'll kill you if you disturb them. G. Bigfoot Pair Cross Road near Crane Lake, Minnesota. I am writing to you about an incident my daughter and I had in early April, 2012, near Crane Lake, Minnesota. We were on our way home and traveling south on Crane Lake Road, only a few miles from the lodge we had stayed the weekend. As we drove around a wide bend in the road we noticed two tall dark creatures walk out of the forest to my left. I slammed the brakes and stopped about 30 feet from them. They seemed oblivious to us as they walked onto the road and barely gave us a glance. They crossed in front of the car and leaped over a ditch then into the forest. I quickly hit the gas pedal and drove for about a quarter mile. I then pulled over to collect myself. My daughter, who is 15, was sitting with a shocked look and not moving. My heart was racing and I was shaking uncontrollably. I think we sat there without saying a word to each other for over a minute. I then asked my daughter what she thought those creatures were. Immediately she said that we had seen Bigfoot. Both creatures were about 7 foot tall and massively built. I was surprised by the amount of dark reddish hair they both had, and how proportionate their bodies were to humans. I saw the face of one of the creatures briefly as it glanced at us. The nose was very broad, but the rest of the face was similar to those you see on TV, that are supposed to be cavemen. They walked upright like humans and didn't slouch. I believe they were both male. I have lived in Minnesota, in St. Cloud, all my life, and I never heard of anyone seeing a Bigfoot. My daughter is convinced that these creatures were Bigfoot. We looked online and found your website. Have there been sightings in the Crane Lake area previously? I called the lodge where we stayed, 
and the woman who answered said that there had been a few sightings in the area over the years, but nothing that close to their location. I'd be interested to know what it was we saw. I can't believe that there are not more reports of these creatures. Thanks for reading. MM. Bigfoot Encounter in America's Heartland, Nebraska. I grew up near Niobrara, Nebraska, not far from the river. My brother and I were able to do a lot back then. We were outside year-round. We really enjoyed fishing in the river for catfish. It was the 1950s and things were different. No one cared much what you did, just so you didn't cause trouble. We usually fished in the morning and evening during the summer. In June 1959 we planned to hike to an area on Medicine Creek and spend a few nights there. It was about 5 miles from home. The second night we were there, we heard strange screaming sounds coming from one of the bluffs west of us. It wasn't like anything else I've ever heard before. We also heard something heavy moving through the brush and trees. I'll admit we were scared. As the night went on, things quieted down. The next morning I walked towards the bluff while gathering firewood. As I approached a rocky pass I caught a glimpse of something big and hairy running away from me. It wasn't a bear and stood at least 7 foot high. It was huge with a wide back. That was enough for me. I was ready to move camp someplace else. My brother and I packed up and started back toward the old trail. I guess we had walked about a mile, then stopped to fish at a good spot we knew. We spent most of the day there. Late afternoon we decided to hike back home. I wasn't feeling well anyway. The area was much different than today. It's part of a state park with lots of roads and camp areas today. Back then it was much more rugged. It was about 6 p.m. and we were close to the footbridge at the river. My brother suddenly stopped walking and pointed at a clearing at the river bank. He said someone was over there. We stood there for a minute, then this huge hairy creature stood straight up and looked right at us. It let out a loud grunt, swinging its arm up over its head. We started running. I don't think we stopped until we got near the roadway at the end of the trail. Over the years, we talked about our run-in with the creature, and we're both sure it was a Bigfoot. I only told a friend about it a few years later, but he thought I was lying to him. We've been back to the same area many times since then and never noticed anything. I contacted the BFRO in the 1990s, but they never came out to take a statement. That's my story. Thanks. Gary T. The Thing in the Woods, Bigfoot Confrontations in Rural Western Pennsylvania. Within the past two or three years, I put pieces together from my childhood and concluded that the creature we all feared when we were kids, which we simply named the thing in the woods, was in fact a Bigfoot. There were just too many similarities to a lot of incidents and descriptions that I've heard from researchers and eyewitness accounts. I also looked up sighting reports and couldn't believe it when I saw that my area, western Pennsylvania, was a literal hotbed of activity. And I can commiserate with others, having something like this lurking in your home area is terrifying, especially for kids. I remember these occurrences didn't really start happening until I was around 11, and my sister was 8. I remember when we first acknowledged our thing to a couple of our cousins when they were visiting for a day. We were sitting on my gram's porch, who lived next door to us in a rural area. It was going to start getting dark in about an hour or so, and we started getting nervous. Our cousins kept asking why we were saying we had to go down home and be in before dark. We finally told them that there was something that would come through the woods after dark, that sounded like a freight train and broke tree branches, and, I guess this was the vital clue, that it stunk awful. The best way to describe it then was like burning rubber. That's when my older cousin, very calmly but matter-of-factly simply said, oh well, it sounds like you have the thing in the woods here too. We were shocked and asked what he meant. He recalled a story he'd heard his dad and uncle talking about to their wives the previous hunting season, about two or three hours from our place this was. They always went deer hunting, and in summer went fishing. They had this little tin trailer they bought for that property that was about a couple hours from their houses. They had it for only about three years. He said that this past hunting season they cut their trip early, coming home after only about three days. And they got home at some crazy hour in the morning, because they'd left in the middle of the night to come home. Their reason was the following. My cousin said that his dad and uncle had been up at camp, and everything seemed normal at first, though it seemed that there were fewer deer that season. Populations changed so they didn't think anything of it. The first night they were there one of them thought they heard some tree breaks while he was out relieving himself, but thought nothing of it, since there are bears up there too. Trees can break naturally in fall. 
That night they slept well, but when they left in the morning they saw some odd pine cones and a couple small rocks around the trailer. They couldn't figure out where they came from. The second night they both heard pinching on the roof and back of the trailer, that sounded like really heavy big hail. It only happened randomly, but it was enough to pique their interest. They looked outside, but didn't see anything. They commented that they smelled something awful, like a skunky type smell. It was my cousin's uncle that had said it reminded him of burning tires on asphalt in the heat of summer, that's why when we said that it tipped my cousin off. Outside that next morning they found more rocks behind the trailer. They climbed a ladder to the roof and there were rocks on top. This definitely perplexed them, but they thought maybe it was some stupid kids messing with them. So they hunted that day and that, final, night they were talking and listening to see if something would happen again. Sure enough they heard some large rocks hitting the back of the trailer. They went out with guns and yelled whoever it was to stop, that they had a right to protect their property, and they'd do it. But the rocks kept coming. They went back out and smelled that awful odor again. Very strong at that point. Then they heard what they described was a loud powerful slap on the backside of the trailer. Now they were mad. They ran out again with their guns to confront the pranksters. They said that all they saw was a dent in the trailer, and as they panned their flashlight, they caught a glimpse of something large taking off through the tree line. They said it had dark fur, like a bear, but they both said they saw it running upright like a person. They knew no one in a fake suit could move that stealthily, or put that dent in the sidewall of their trailer. They went inside and one of them said, we just saw a freaking Bigfoot. They packed up their things and left within the hour, feeling very threatened. That was the last time they ever went to that property. So something terrified these lifelong hunters and woodsmen into giving up something they loved. Hearing that story made me a believer. We were terrified all through growing up of the thing in the woods. Even to this day, after more recent encounters, I'm just as scared and won't go there at night. And what really solidified my belief that Bigfoot were around here was when I started to live with my ex, not living there now because he passed away unexpectedly. He insisted that there were Bigfoot coming around the property. He had weird habits too, which made me feel he was serious. He was a very well-respected army veteran and active duty policeman. RK. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first-person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.